this has been a bit of a backfire as far as uh, everything is concerned. We're first going to talk. Maybe you can. You've got some notes about this dude. What happened to this dude? Uh, this dude. Oh no, no. I'm, I'll talk about the other guy. This dude just. Uh, he did like an art piece where he's in mainland China. He stood in front of uh, the uh, principles of Chinese uh, socialism. Mm -hmm. Right here, you see like Zio and all that kind of stuff. Freedom, freedom, like all those fake pillars of what Chinese socialism actually means. Yes, uh, he stood in front of them like Tank Man. So yeah. you remember Tank Man? Yes, the guy stood in front of the tanks. He had the two Everyone bags knows. and on. Yeah, he had the headband on, and he had the two bags. Right. Mm -hmm. So he did this, and apparently, this is alleged, but apparently, this guy's disappeared. Yeah, uh, since this doing this, he's, since di he's disappeared. This is mild photo to bring awareness back to Tiananmen Square, but it's very much related. Uh, to our main segment here. Yeah, bring it up in a second. It's about this guy, Li Jiaqi, right? Austin Li. And I'm just going to, while you bring it up, I'm going to read some stats. This influencer in China had 64 million followers. So that made yeah. him the biggest biggest one in China. Yeah, this right. is this guy in the background, by the way. Uh, I got to introduce a little bit about him. You can tell the stats in a minute, but he is known as lipstick brother number one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, literally. He... Um, Basically made his career. He he started working for I think L'Oreal or something at one of those little booths in a mall. Oh wow! And then what a come up. Yeah. So basically, he realized that people were not comfortable trying on the different colors. He was trying to sell to them. So he thought a novel idea. He'd wear the different colors of lipstick and make it more yeah, comfortable. Just yeah. show people like, look, this is this color. That's a clever idea. And apparently, he became like massively popular. Right. Um, and so he started to win all these. These competitions, right? I, it's, I, Huge I mean, influencer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm a little cringed out by him, to be honest. It's just me. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, he's fantastically. He became fantastically popular. Okay, yeah. fantastically popular, and he started to garner a massive following. And he started to do the live streaming thing and started to sell stuff. Okay, now, uh, what were you saying about his net worth? So, let me read off. Yeah, put the footage up here. Okay, so. Li Jiaqi, Austin Lee, English name. So you're right. going to find him, Austin Lee. Austin Lee. 64 million followers. Can you imagine that? Yeah. That's literally like, what, a fifth of America's population? Yeah. Right? Uh, $15 million net worth. But that was prior to this. It's like an old yeah. stat. Yeah, yeah. So $15 million just from streaming 15 lipstick. Years, yeah, over right. 100 million RMB, right? Oh, by the way, um, lipstick in Chinese is, is one of my favorite, like, direct translations, kind of. Yeah. Uh, for example, one of my favorites is uh, Frankenstein, which yeah. is uh, Ku Shui Guai Ren, which means yeah. Science Strange Man. How about Shindang Jia Lao Ren, which yeah. is Christmas, Christmas Old, old man. man, which is Santa Claus. Yeah. But the, one of my favorites <laughs> is lipstick, which is Ko Hong. Ko Hong means red mouth. Yeah. Or mouth, mouth red. red. Yeah, Ko Hong. Lipstick yeah. is mouth red. Anyway, yes. he was lipstick brother number one, and he was wealthy beyond all belief but he was the biggest influencer in china and the, the reason that's important is that we've seen this multiple times mm. where an influencer gets so big and so large that all eyes are on him and the ccp will cut them down to size yeah we'll explain but before we do that i gotta tell you this guy pulled off an incredible feat 2018 he broke the Guinness world record for the most lipstick applications in 30 seconds how is that a record <laughs> I feel like you can make a record out of anything. You can. But, I want to. Uh, this but, is not. Hey. This is not a place for jokes right now, though, because yeah. the poor guy is. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get there. But before that, I also yeah. have to tell you that uh, in one broadcast, and this was like in April last this year. This is crazy. Yeah. yeah. In one broadcast, he and his sales partner, who was a CCTV uh, anchor, so Chinese Central Television anchor, they achieved sales of forty million. RMB, UN. What is that in US dollars? Uh, let me pull. Let's figure it out. 40 million yen in two hours. Okay? <laughs> and there were nearly 11 million people um, watching. Six million bucks. Six, so in two hours, this guy, like, we've got to explain just how big he is. Yeah, six million US dollars in two hours he made sales yeah. for, like, lipstick. and But it's not just lipstick. The guy sells everything. Oh, it's beauty products. It's, like, He's ducks. the little, yeah, little food. Food things. Food things snacks. or snacks. Like, anything. He's become yeah. so popular that people, obviously, they hire him. Companies give, like, really pay him a lot of money to go and, uh, you know, advertise their products. Yeah. So, he is China's number one Juggernaut. influencer. Juggernaut. Number one. Yeah. Like, there is no... no. There was a number one before him, and mm. she's disappeared. Why did she disappear? Let me read the quote here. Okay. So her name was uh, Via. Mm -hmm. 
And she was disappeared. We actually we covered this before, uh, but it's been it's been a while yeah. since she since she pieced out. So but, what? Yeah. So she was known as Via. She was, her name was Huang Wei, mm-hmm. and there was another one called Chu, uh, Zhu Chen Hui. Mm-hmm. Her name was Cherry. Yeah. Um, th- and they were fined millions of dollars. So first first they disappeared off the internet, right? Yeah. For tax evasion by the local tax authority in Hangzhou, that was at least the guys. Yeah, that's that oh, why yeah. they were punished, They did that right? to Fan Bingbing as well, remember? Yeah, and mm-hmm. they had to uh, make public apologies in their Taobao accounts, which is going to be where they're making the majority of their money and products. And other social media presence disappeared, and they never live streamed again. They, yeah, they effectively disappeared. Well, I mean, let, let's then explain what happened to this guy because we have to get yeah, serious sure. about this, okay? Because look, this guy. He's a maverick, okay? He came up from yeah. nothing. He built himself on sure. lipstick. It's okay, actually lipstick, pretty inspiring. If lipstick you look brother at, number one. No, but seriously, like coming yeah. from a kiosk and yeah. becoming a multi-multi-millionaire influencer. Absolutely. And Huge it's, fan base, yeah, too. Yeah, it's admirable. Anyway, yeah. the fact of the matter is, okay, he's that's now the eve of the Tiananmen Square Massacre anniversary, yes. okay? And a few hours before the anniversary... Um, He's live streaming, selling a bunch of tat as usual and yeah. selling whatever he's selling. Sure. And uh, one of the items that they are presenting is a cake slash ice cream slash whatever it is that, as you can see in the picture, it's our thumbnail as well. I'll get us out of there for a second. Um, looks like a tank. Right? So yeah. now the it's thing... It's an ice cream cake. Yeah, it's an ice cream cake. kind of looks like it, it looks... Pretty well, bad. Let, let me explain the, the tank real quick. Okay. So the ice cream cake was the base. <laughs> okay. And then the tread pattern was not tread. It was actually Oreos. Okay. And then they used a chocolate, one of those chocolate tubes, those yeah. logs. Yeah. To be the gun, the turret. Yeah, the turret, right? yeah. Okay. So yeah, that, that's... Because so you have audio listeners out oh, there. Oh, that's true. Okay. So it looks like super amateur hour anyway. But that's something that they were showing. And I don't know if, why they were showing it, if it's they were trying to sell this or if they were trying to show this is what you can make at home or something. Yes. But almost immediately, the stream got cut yes. and censored. And all his social media went down. In right. other words, went silent. I think it's right. still up there. But since that stream, he hasn't appeared on social media once. Right. He missed scheduled live streams that he was supposed to be doing. Okay, so stuff where he was supposed to be on. Um and uh, he's not been reachable by anyone. No. Can I make one quick correction? What's that? You know that day where you said he made 40 million RMB? Yeah. It was actually 1.9 billion RMB. Seriously? Yes. No, but I know it was like within, two, within two... Billion. In the first day of his Alibaba sales. No, okay, but I'm talking about him and that woman they did in two hours. Oh, yeah. 40 million. Oh, in two hours. So I'm, not, yeah. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm but, saying I think that's a key stat yeah. to have. That's 200, 200 plus million dollars in, in a, a day. day. Yeah. So, so that's like the, another guy, perspective. Another you got to understand how yeah. <laughs> much influence. You got to understand China, really. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> you got to understand. <laughs> anyway, that's how much influence. Yeah. Continue. Yeah. Sorry. Anyway, so the fact of the matter is he's gone completely radio silent. I mean, yeah. forcefully so. silent. Yeah. Silent. Yeah, exactly. But this has caused something which is known as the Li Jiaqi paradox. Yeah. Okay. Because... Nobody could understand, all right? Something that the Chinese government has been working incredibly hard to do over the past um, two, two or three decades is to erase any mention, image, or knowledge of the Tiananmen Square massacre. It's not taught in school. No. Nope. It's not taught in history. No. Nope. It's never shown on TV. It's never shown in the newspapers. People who try to talk about get silenced. They yep. get arrested. They get, yep. they get disappeared or whatever. You cannot talk about it. And I experienced this myself in China a lot, that nobody knew what it was. Oh, yeah. This is what we go, we've okay. went through. Yeah. And the reason I found out about this is, obviously, I knew if you're going to China, you don't talk to people about Tiananmen Square. It's a political landmine. You know, it's a hot yes. topic. You don't talk about it. But I remember a couple of times I, by mistake, mentioned it because I turned. it turned out the first time I went to Beijing, the first time I went to Tiananmen Square, just happened to be on the anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre. And I couldn't understand what was going on, why there was so much security, why my bag was triple checked, why the, yeah. The, yeah. the guards were following me around and yep. there was all this crap going on. And so 
I was, you know, occasionally it came up in, in conversation. I'd be talking to some friends or people I'd met or students or whatever. And I'd say, yeah, you know, when I went to Beijing, it was really hectic because I went there on the anniversary and then, yeah. I, then I had to stop myself and like, they'd be like, Wait a minute. Yeah, and then they were like, that, yeah. what, what anniversary, you know, and it actually got me into trouble once. But, you know, the fact of the matter is people didn't know. Nobody nope. knew. Nobody the knew. Very few people, the very yeah. few people that I met in China that knew what Tiananmen Square Massacre was, they they were taught it was a good thing. Yeah. And that it was justified and they were t- like domestic terrorists. Yeah, they were basically. getting rid of domestic yeah. terrorists. So here's the thing. Most of this guy's, I mean, this guy was born in like 92. Yeah. Okay. So he's young, um, which makes me feel super old. <laughs> okay. But he was born in 92. And um, most of his followers are young women. The majority, like 99%. Yes. Yeah. Okay. As, young as women. It would be yeah. with the majority of women being interested in makeup. Yeah, and handsome Especially young men. And handsome young men. So anyway, all these, the majority of his followers are, are young women who, the, most of them never knew that this Tiananmen Square uprising happened in the first place. Mm-hmm. They don't know about it. But because his stream got cut, everybody wanted to know why. Because he's the biggest influencer in China. He's the number one. Everybody is invested in him. All of his fans, all of his sales people, everybody wants to know what happened. So they start looking around. They're like, what did he do? He showed a, a tank. Why is that sensitive? What's wrong with a tank? And Yeah, actually, I saw some pictures. I, I yeah. couldn't, you know, I saw them the other day, and I couldn't even find them to put them back on. It's been scrubbed. Yeah. But there's uh, girls, which is very rare, but girls around college age girls yeah. standing up with banners that they made to, for protests. They made yeah. protests for him, and it said, like, uh, I'm hungry, but I won't eat until Li Jiaqi comes back. Yeah. Right? It's crazy to see. Because he's missing. He's missing. Right? So everybody's like, what could have triggered this? And because of that, they started to do some research. They started to use VPNs. They, they yeah. wanted to know what's going on. Yeah. And for the first time, I was reading articles in, um, you know, not in Chinese media, but in, in alternative Chinese media, like in Taiwan and various places. I was reading articles of what people were saying, and they were like, I didn't even know about the Tiananmen nope. Square uprising before this happened. What is, um, what is that called? Yeah, that's called the... Uh, Papa, can you see me? That's the Streisand, Streisand effect. effect. Big okay. time. Massive. Huge. And that caused thousands of people to look up something that the oh, Chinese more government than has, thousands. Yeah, okay. Millions. <laughs> yeah. They have successfully silenced. Yes. China has gotten to the point where they have so successfully silenced and bastardized what actually happened in 1989 that it's not a threat anymore. Yeah. It was more of a threat when we were like first in China, when we first got to China, 05 to 08. Yeah. There was still a threat where it's recent enough to people like, holy shit, if you find out about that, that's like mind blowing. I remember yeah. my, when, my, when my, my wife found out about that in university, yeah. Macau, her professor taught them about it and she cried. Yeah. Because it was recent enough to be like, holy shit. But China has stifled it for so long and so successfully that right now they don't really worry too much about that information getting out there. Yeah. But when you actively censor a gosh darn cake. Yes. Right? Imagine being for, imagine being afraid of a cake. Yeah. A Tiananmen Square cake, right? It's not it's even a Tiananmen Square yeah, It's whatever, literally a tank, a tank cake. cake. A, ta- a, a shitty tank cake. Well, I wonder if yeah. it tastes good, by the way. I kind of want a tank cake now. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. But then you get rid of it at the same time. So you stifle this. Imagine... If they were smart, you just pull down that episode. If they're going to be that petty and ridiculous, you pull yeah. down that episode or you yeah. censor that scene, and people are like, oh, okay, the rumblings go away. But when you disappear, the guy, the number one guy, again, number it shows one influencer. you how tone deaf and brain dead mm. CCP leadership is when you do that because they have ultimate goals is to have control over the people. Yeah. But people are going to question that. They don't realize. I think the Chinese government said they get scared about how much power and money these people have, like yeah. like Li Jiaqi. But they do. They don't understand the full scope of that. They don't realize that people care about him more than the Chinese government. Yes. The average twenty-year-old girl doesn't give an absolute shit about some piece of shit bastard potbelly smoking guy in yeah. the CCP. Yeah, they, they don't care give about a him. Shit about that guy. Yeah. If he lives or dies, they care about lipstick brother. They number care one. about lipstick brother number one. And the Chinese government not, not only hates that. Right. Yeah. But they also think they overestimate their power. Mm. They overestimate the fact that people do look up to other people that are much more inspirational, like Li Jiaqi, than some piece of shit CCP potbelly guy. Of course. Right. So this is where they've miscalculated people again. And now a shit ton of people in China know about something that they really don't want them to know about. Yeah, that's crazy. huh? It's crazy. Yeah. So the, the, the whole end game of this is we don't know if this was intentional or not. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's the thing. A lot of his fans are now coming out and saying, he was born in 1992. We didn't know about it. He didn't know about no. it. Like, this is just... <laughs> like, I, the, there's a part of me that would like to think that this mega superstar, million, multi 
billionaire, millionaire with that earns so much money would never try to jeopardize his career by doing something like this on purpose. Okay, but part of me really hopes that he did do it on purpose. I, I think he did. I think so? I think he did. I think so. I think he thought that it would cause discussion without becoming such a big issue. Yeah, may maybe sense. he thought he was too big to be touched. No, I think it's more of a situation where it's so innocuous and so ridiculous that it's almost like an inside joke or something. Right, and he didn't think like, people would take him seriously. Yeah, like he probably is could have pro-democracy democracy inklings, right? He probably mm -hmm. studied abroad, that kind of stuff. Maybe. But you have a situation where he can do something like this and then nobody pays attention to it and the people that know, know. And it's kind right, of like, right, you know, right. it's like a silent acknowledgement. Maybe it was that woman over there. Yeah. It's hard to tell. It's hard like, to tell. It's really hard to tell. Um, because at the end of the day, the, the, end, the, the end effect is that he's been completely disappeared. Yeah. And completely disappeared off social media, probably permanently. I speculate that he'll make a reappearance and do some pro CCP stuff. Yeah, that does that does happen. Do. That yeah. does happen. Not by his choice, by mm. the way. No. But anyway, that's kind of what's happened with that. We thought this guy, wow, like when they take down big dogs like this, mm. it's not good. It's not no, good. No, it's never good. So anyway, um, now you know how sensitive the Chinese government is about um, you know the Tiananmen Square they cry, massacre. They cry over tank cakes, and that's why um, very recently we've had. Uh, all these incidents in America, actually, twice twice now. Um, Cornell University, mm -hmm. um, just last week. Yeah. Was it Cornell yeah, University? Cornell, yeah. Uh, a, Hong Kong, a Hong Kong student was yeah. putting up a free Hong Kong poster. And a light post. Yeah, yeah which stickers, they're, yeah. they're allowed to do. Yeah. And uh, a mainland Chinese student. Scratched him. Yeah, came and attacked him. Yeah, scratched his head. Yeah, hand. well, he didn't like, he didn't come up like a cat and go around. Kind of, I saw the footage. You did go around? You saw the footage? Yeah, I saw the footage, but I didn't see him come and go around. No, I saw the aftermath. It's yeah. Just goes, yeah. No, I mean, the, sure. the injury was a scratch, yeah. but that was the result of a scuffle. Yeah, I know. He didn't come up I and just, say like, I'll I scratch know. your hand if you scratch mine. <laughs> I know. You know, it wasn't no, like I a little. Saying, I was just wondering if you had seen that. Of course. Like, we can't make it out to be like a No, I'm not injury. saying it's, a, but he no, injured yeah, him. He drew blood. He did. He did. Okay, he drew blood because. The Hong Kong guy was trying to put up a poster. So first of yeah. all, it is it is physical no, I, assault. Absolutely, I just didn't. He was physically that. assaulted. He didn't get shot. No, he was yeah. physically assaulted by a mainland student, yes. also going to Cornell yes. University. Correct. And his posters destroyed and ripped up and stuff. Correct. Which they got to stop doing this, by yeah, the way. Probably. If if there was one thing I could do, if I could choose a full time job, my full time job would be to go Protect onto Cornell university schools. campuses and. Make sure that there's enough representation about the Tiananmen Square massacre and Taiwan issues and Tibet and any, anything that's sensitive. It's protected. Anything that's sensitive when it comes to the CCP mm. and make sure that anyone who messes with that stuff realizes that there are laws and consequences when you're outside right. of China. Right. Because they always seem to get away with yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And this happened as well down in, um, you know, near where we used to live in California, the, the USC something, I think it is. They also had a Tiananmen Square um, like thing that they put up. They put up candles, LED candles, but they put up candles. Oh, okay. And they stuck some posters to the floor there oh, and to, to commemorate. And two mainland Chinese students came, started kicking all the candles away and tearing up the posters and stuff like that. It's like, little babies. dude. The embassy tells them to do that. Spoiled by little children. We yeah. get it. In your country, you're not allowed to have an opinion sure. that's other than the main right. narrative. You're not allowed to talk about these things. But when you're in the States and other countries, everybody has the yeah. right to express their own opinions. Right. And you need to be able to respect their opinions. You don't need to, well, at least respect their um, chance to have an opinion. You don't need to respect them. You don't need to care about their opinions. But you're not allowed to go around trying to censor people on American soil. No. no. Just because they want to remember the victims of a freaking massacre, massacre. You know? Yeah. It just shows you how indoctrinated people are and how successful the Chinese government has been yes. at censoring the Tiananmen Square massacre and turning it into something else. So to wrap it up, justice for all the people that want to remember this massacre and have yeah. representation for it and justice for Lipstick Man, uh, brother, lipstick number, brother one. number one. And uh, we hope to see him back in hopefully in a different country where he is safe. I agree. Yeah.